It's oath sworn into the deep wood, an enormous box with multiple other enormous boxes that I decided to represent with this small, <laughs> this small armory. Is that the armory box? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's a really small game, as you can see. Um, it's just a bunch of plastic pieces, really. Uh, which I'm gonna need to unblur this. Uh, there you go. Uh, it's just a bunch of plastic pieces, really. Um, but uh, no, so it's an enormous game. The box is actually, without a shadow of a doubt, the heaviest uh, board game box in existence. Uh, yes, that includes Gloomhaven. Maybe not Frosthaven, but I suspect it will. Minis, minis. Difter, I don't have the minis, and I'm honestly quite glad about it. Yeah, so, so yes, yeah, so that, that brings us on to... Uh, so it's, it's Oathborn Into the Deep Wood by Jamie Jolly, artists, uh, art by Francesca Ber- uh, Beral, Vladimir Bruchik, Sean Jackson, uh, uh, Dong Zhong Lu, and uh, Dong Biao Lu. Uh, published by Shadowborn Games, uh, they pro- kindly provided a review copy to Race Day Play of, with the standees, um, and yeah. uh, I, I myself, however, did uh, back uh, fully back the Kickstarter with with the miniatures and uh, the armory set, uh, so you can swap out physically swap out weapons on characters and all that kind of stuff. So um, right, so this was well to be to be clear, it's not sprue construction or anything like that. It's a unique thing. This was a big marketing thing during the Kickstarter, which is to say they're snap fit models. So they've all got pegs and holes. They all snap together, and you can pull the models right apart. Even the torsos come apart, and the heads come off, and the arms come out. And then you can fit different arms and armors onto the models to change up their equipment physically exactly. as you play the game. And that's what the armory box is. It's all the alternate pieces. And there is some controversy of the fact that they do sometimes arms fall out kind of when you're moving them about. They don't fit together as beautifully as you might have hoped. Uh, but there's, there's, a, there's like a bunch of people, some people kind of really re- review bombing the game based on that, which I think is a bit mean because, yes, it didn't, the push fit doesn't work quite as elegantly and perfectly as I envisioned it working, but it still works. And it, and, and it, 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 it's fine. Like sometimes when you move a model across the, the, the an arm will fall off and you have to go, oh, put it back in again. It's <laughs> fine. And so, battle damage takes a hit points. It's, it's really not a big deal. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, anyway, so yes, it plays one to four. It's fully cooperative. Um, it is a, so the similarities are going to be drawn between it and King Death Monster, between it and Gloomhaven. Um, it's kind of, a, yeah, it's a boss battler. Um, well, so actually there's fifth, there's 18, 20 chapters. I can't remember. Something like, 20, something like 18 to 20 chapters. And each chapter has two sections, the story section and it has an encounter section. Uh, I would say each story section is one to two hours to play. This is this is not what the box says. Is what I'm saying. Having played uh, six chapters, <laughs> um, uh, once two hours for each story and two to three hours for an encounter. So we're talking three to five hours for a chapter. Um, I would say uh, it takes probably a full hour to teach the game fully and properly. Um, and I, there's also about sixty to ninety minute preparation before you ever play, where you have to take things out of the box and organize all the cards, etc., all that kind of stuff. It has a good long 60, probably 60 to 90 minutes, actually, of setup like that, followed by a 60-minute teach and a five-hour chapter. Um, it's uh, very highly thematic, obviously, um, being a fully story-driven game. Um, it uh, So the mechanics it mostly involves, before we get into the nitty-gritty of it, uh, just as an overview, are it involves hand management and card play, action points and, and the action point usage um there's dice rolling uh there's push your luck not just in, in dice rolling but uh, in other ways as well uh, variable player powers it is as a, as a dungeon crawling ba- boss battling game it is obviously got a high level of luck um but there are there's there are there's manipulation you can do with uh, with card decks and and whatnot and uh, also you know seeing and working out kind of good card good com- card card and character combos uh, definitely does have some, an element of non deterministic skill to it. Um, I appreciate you getting the copy because like this this is this is one I was, forgot. I actually I, have this, I, this is one I was not bringing to my to my my computer desk. Um, so. Uh, Okay, so um, I've played six chapters. I've also played the first chapter twice, actually. 
Um, I've played all. Uh, and you'll be playing it again with me. <laughs> I will. I've played it with two at all times, five hours per chapter. Um, it's gone down exceptionally well. My friend Richard uh, adores it, as do I. Deborah enjoyed the story very much, not so much the combat as I expected, uh, but she did say that she was invested enough and enjoyed the story enough that it motivated her to pl- much more than you know than he, she usually would be to uh, do to play, to play the combat sections. Um, it's uh, on on a brief mention of kind of its its win its how, its win conditions. Um, the default system has no lose state. Uh, you can try again if you fail an encounter. You can't you can't fail a story mission. Uh, it, will, it will things will change. It will happen. You know things will change and all and for better or worse, you might be hurt or hindered, but you can't fail it. The the encounter phase, if you fail it, you can choose to move on or you can choose to replay it. But the 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 fact that you fail the first time and you got four characters knocked out will that's that's your result. You 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 can replay it for fun, but you can't replay it to alter your your stats going forward. Um, there is, however, so then, then at the end of the campaign, basically your success and failure is basically threat encounters that mod of that affects your score and kind of how the end game goes. Um, there is, however, a hardcore permadeath ver- permadeath version where every time a ca- oh, so because so, the game lets you freely swap out you always play with four characters regardless of how many players you have um and i think there's a proc there's like 12 maybe characters available i mean you'll be able to count them there mike um and uh it, you can freely swap them out there's a quick leveling system so you can make sure level level someone up to the level to the power level they should be for chapter five if you ha- want to try a new character out in the permanent hardcore permadeath version though if a character is knocked out in combat they die and they're dead and you can never play as them ever again and if all oath sworn characters die the campaign is over um so there is a there is a fail state version <laughs> And Mike is taking apart the Ursus Warbear. Um, sorry, sorry, Ursus. Look, it's Lego now. <laughs> I didn't realize you could take the take take that take it off to that. Oh, well, I didn't realize you could do this to that extent. <laughs> yeah, um, you have to change his armor. Now. Yeah, I've, I've only I've only taken off her head and her uh, her arms. Um, right. So that's that's that. Okay. So that's how it that's works. the degree of the snap fit models, right? So these are the heroes here. Yeah. So there's four, seven, ten, twelve, twelve heroes. These are some other bits. And everything else I have. These are enemies, I guess, or tokens. Uh, no, they're I mean. they are they're companions. Help and, companions. And, uh, yeah, like the for example, the huntress has those two eagles, for example, as like as like minions. Okay. Well, they look good. These pieces look good. Yeah, they're like, great minis. Um, they're nice chunky minis too. The the miniatures are a good song. Yeah, they're nice big chunky minis. Given that there's a it's a big sort of boss battler, you want like sort of sorry about that. I'll take the plastic off. Um, you want sort of like chunky. Um, minis to be um like sort of satisfying and big to run around the board and create these sort of epic battles so these are really good ones um from what i've seen i haven't played them. yeah no they're really good minis i i really like them a lot um and the bosses every single encounter has a unique boss with a unique miniature and sometimes it's a miniature and and a bunch of minions I think you mean you need uh, Standy, Chris. Yes, indeed. Yes, Standy in the in the core set and uh, miniatures in the uh, in the Kickstarter version. Uh, well, not, it's not a Kickstarter version; it's just the miniatures version, which you can buy. As um, it has, it does have that wonderful legacy uh, feel of or a Christmas advent calendar feel. Uh, it is exceptionally exciting, I must say, to play a story mode, kind of get 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 get, get play a story section, get the kind of slow, well, very well written, I must say reveal of what the monster is going to be and then being invited to open a box up and pull out the mini it is very very cool and those minis are tremendous as well um and then um oh my god yeah the setup for this i got this and i had to go through it and i made all these little bags for all the different characters hey you've done all (laughs) yeah i've done a lot of it it took a really long time i'm not sure if i've done the decks correctly you're you're storing it slightly incorrectly but apart from (laughs) <laughs> well there was a guide but i think yeah, i got i think I, I was so tired after doing it i was just kind of like yeah this this seems to have worked <laughs> um, but just just to i mean so the, the the story mode is just making decisions about which location to go to making locations about you know how to choose to interact with uh you know whether you want to like i don't know, let the prisoner go or 
kick the prisoner or kill the prisoner or let him go. You know, you know all these various story think beats. They they effectively just have light impacts on the on the um, the upcoming encounter. It's kind of one of those things where if you, if you probably went into it, they probably aren't very meaningful, but they feel meaningful because you don't know what ha- what the, you know it's, you know the whole illusion of choice versus real choice. All games are illusion of choice. I've I've made this comment many times in this channel that people who say Oh, it's not a choice, it's an illusion of choice, therefore it's bad. Don't understand how the world works. Um, also, there is the monster, no such thing as free will, so, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> of course it's free will, we have no choice. Um, but, uh, so so that's what the story modes are. There are also some skill, some skill checks, some light skill checks, stuff that go on in that. Um, uh, and then the, but then the, and then the encounter phase is basically every character, a bit like in Gloomhaven, have you know their have their own deck of cards, uh, not sorry, hand of cards. As you level up, you'll get access to more cards, and you can select which seven or eight, whichever it is you want to bring with you into combat. Um, I'd show you one, but I don't generally don't know how to find one that's not a spoiler. Oh, the ones in the black bags, the sort of starting things. The black bag should have all of them, but not character. spoilers, not like spoiler free stuff. This is spoiler free stuff. This is spoiler free. So yeah, so who just just so this take is the out, blade. This is the blade. So find the blade's first card there. there uh, well, go. I've got one called cut. Is this a good example? Yeah, show me the card and I'll tell you if it's a starting card. Look away, people who don't want to see spoilers. That's a starting card. You're fine. I can tell because it's got a star underneath the word cut. There we go. So here's a starting uh, starting thing. So this for uh, hang on. Let's let's show you who this is. This is the blade. Here he is. He's a very handsome chap. Um, he also falls apart, so if you want to get into his pants, you can pull him right apart. So it's worth noting that the card there, that the, just the, the card that Mike's showing you there, is the companion card. So every character actually can be played in two ways. They can be played as a companion, or they can play as a full oath sworn. Um, if you play as a companion, basically it massively streamlines their their um, their rules. So instead of having this hand of cards, they basically just have two action points each turn, and they can either att- they can either uh, they can move, they can attack, or they can use one of two special abilities. Uh, or they can be played as a full character and have all these cards. Uh, and this is an example of one of those cards. You can play a character as a companion, and then next mission play them as a full of sworn, then go back to companion. There's no... It's it's kind of the sort of thing... If, for example, if you're playing two-player, it might be sensible to speed the game up to each of you to play one full character, and you should play your second character as a companion character. It's entirely up to you. Um, so, this, yeah, this is an example of a full card. In the top left there, it's how many animus, that's your action points, it costs to play the card. In this case, this card has multi multiple options, so it's a question mark. You can spend three animus to attack with it, just a basic attack. One animus to battle flow a card, that's basically the system of cool down of, of cool down of cards to get the cards back into your hand. Uh, or you can spend two to refresh the might decks, the might decks being the, uh, the, mod- the, the, the attack modifier decks. Um, and then in the top uh, top right there, zero is is the position it enters into the battle flow uh, state, into which which position it enters the battle flow. So card zero means it's about to come back into your hand. And the bottom there it shows the defense. If you you can play the card for zero defense, so you would not play that card for defense. <laughs> <laughs> um, and speaking of the might deck, it's worth one of the one of the things I really love about this game is the fact that every single time you roll dice. Uh, you can actually roll dice or draw cards from the modifier deck. The modifier decks basically represent. Uh, there's 18 cards in each modifier that's deck. That's this, right? Yeah, that's those 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 cards with the dice in the back there. So each each of those decks has 18 cards in them. So basically, each face of a white die is represented three times. So there's two there's two blanks on a white die, which mean that uh, there are uh, two times three. So there's six blank cards in that white deck. Um, Probably not being shuffled. So, so, um, so the great. So every single time you you draw, you you draw, you can draw and roll in whatever combination you want. And Mike actually there has rolled, uh, well, he hasn't rolled them, but uh, a critical two on the white and a critical three on the yellow. So even though he rolled that, he could then he, a critical means he can he gets an extra die slash card. So even though he rolled that two, he could then say, okay, I'm going to now draw a draw a card instead of rolling an extra die for my critical exploding dice. Uh, and I love this. We were doing this. Rich and I were take work. We were, when, if like for example, if we if we got a hit, uh, if we if we if we got the damage we needed uh, with 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 some dice, we when we had crits, we'd start using the crits to flip over the deck so we could start learning what's in the deck, and we'd set the decks up later for good. Hit. We we basically, yeah, you can be very clever basically in how you want to uh, 
and how you want to uh, when you want to roll, when you want to draw the cards. It it it's, it becomes this whole little fun mini game in and of itself of making it deterministic. Um, there are two sets of cards. Why? Uh, monster cards. Ah, so these are monsters and those are heroes. Uh, the ones you have open are heroes. Yeah. Oh, these are heroes. Yeah, I I, I also made that mistake. When I first, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> well, you would have thought that the heroes would be the ones with all the weapons on. It's completely irrelevant, though, because they're exactly the same. <laughs> mm. um, the the enemies ones even have the criticals and everything. Although the enemies you don't um, don't they they never miss. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. So right, so when you when you attack, so for example, that blade had three animus to make an attack. Um, the blade will have an amount of might determined by his weapons. So let's say he has he might have one yellow might to start the game. Let's say, based on the starting swords, my guess. One yellow mice. So that means he draw. He gets one yellow die or one yellow card. Um, and then you can take as many white dice or cards as you want, up to a max of ten, I think. But the thing is, so you can roll a crap ton of die with a weak attack. But the thing is, if you get two blanks or more, the attack misses no matter what. <gasps> so it's up to you how many you want to roll. Uh, enemies never miss, but they also never crit. Um, you can roll dice for enemies, but it's recommended that you use cards only for enemies. But you can do what you want. Um, it's your game. Just have fun. <laughs> pretty much. Uh, but I think it would get frustrating potentially uh, with the with the uh, baddies if they if they start rolling crazy good. Whereas if you roll crazy good, it's cool. Um, <laughs> and also, if you roll crazy bad, this is the other thing that makes that that so something like Gloomhaven really, really annoying about Gloomhaven was uh, you spend all this time putting in a massive big attack and then you draw the miss. The yeah. one card in your deck that misses and that's just not fun it's not fun i don't care what you say it's not fun <laughs> um so this has a rule called the determination rule where if you miss an attack so there are other there are also tokens you can spend to modify attacks you can empower dice to turn a, a you know turn a white die into a black die that kind of stuff um when you if you miss an attack you get back any tokens you spent to buff that attack plus one additional token of your choice and that represents your character being more determined to succeed next time where they failed. Which means that even when you fail and, and met, bit fluff an attack completely, you get the resource you spent back. You don't get the action points back. The action is still gone. But um, it, it, that completely fixes that huge problem from Gloomhaven for me. Um, the bo uh, the boss, uh, boss is actually according to a behavior deck. The, you, always see, you can always see what the enemy is going to do next turn as well, unlike in most of these games. The, the next thing they're going to do on their turn is face up, so you, you can see, so you can you can try and plan appropriately. Um, the artwork in this game, to me, is absolutely out of this world. I think it's so good. Um, I I think genuinely, and this I, I think this is a phenomenally good game. Like, phenomenally good. And I remember in, it was at Essen 2019, it was on Kickstarter, and I backed it from our accommodation there and i remember mike saying oh yeah i saw that game at ukg last year i didn't think much of it mike well i think you were the, so wrong <laughs> well the demo i mean well for a start it had all the red flags right um and the demo they showed us of the combat was not massively compelling i have to this i mean i i feel like this has exceeded from what i've been told colloquially all expectations um, and I think what's really it's met, by the sound you said it's met expectations you said exceeded I said exceeded oh sorry yeah sorry um, and I think what's I mean I think what's really sort of set it apart as well is that from what I've heard the story is good and well written you know yeah. and that's actually way rarer than it should be honestly yeah. that's the, that should be the starting point really um, and, and definitely no spoilers, but there are there are good surprises. There are genuinely good twists and turns and surprises that will catch you off guard. Like it's a good story. So I'm I'm extremely excited to dip into this. And to be fair, I wasn't completely dismissive of no 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 you weren't you because weren't. you weren't you weren't I was I was, I, being, what I, I was being mean but, but, you, but you said <laughs> no, you, weren't, I, you definitely weren't overly enthusiastic for it. But I did also pursue a review copy quite relentlessly. So <laughs> yes, indeed, indeed, and and uh, um, Shaman of Born Games were kind enough to provide it. Yes, and we will... big uh, big props to to um, Jamie Jolly who sorted us out with a review copy and promised to do that um, for us. And you know, the intention is has always been the reason we wanted the second copy was to do the playthrough on the channel, like. Jaws of the Lion, where we sort of play remotely together, 
and the intention is still very much to do oh yes that. and i i would like to advocate that we play on um per hardcore in hardcore mode are you sure because uh i know some i know some people have been playing and they can't even beat the first chapter uh i've played the first chapter twice now and I've with Deborah, we beat it. I think I think we had two oath sworn get knocked out, and when I played with Richard, we had one oath sworn get knocked out. So uh, I'm surprised people can't beat it, but uh, maybe I'm just really good. <laughs> but my point is, but uh, but then we didn't lose anyone for quite a while then. Um, but we nearly did. It, it, I I I think it's worth doing. I think it'd be fun. I really do. I I'm never gonna replay this game again. I'm playing a, a campaign with Richard. I'm gonna play a, a campaign with you. I don't know if Deborah's gonna see it through. I think she might make the take the excuse the fact that I've play I'm playing it twice more <laughs> already that she might not play it through with me. I'd like to try the permadeath version. And I do think it's fun. The idea of the stress involved with oh my god. I, if, my, if this character gets dies in this scenario, we cannot use him for the rest of the game. He's gone. Like, well, I do think that also gives us a good excuse to sort of swap them around and try. So I like your idea of suggesting uh, we each have sort of one that we're controlling and one companion. Um, yeah, I think, that I think like for, stream, sort of, for stream purposes, that's a really yeah. sensible idea, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think that sounds good. So uh, I also like this battle damage. Like, you know, you take a critical hit and you're like, blah, no! <laughs> <laughs> Ah, no, it's just a flesh wound. I mean, we could, we could, we could house rule that once we get down to our final four, no one, no one can die anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can see how far we get, yeah, and you know, we're, I'm not gonna like not finish it if we get to like to that chapter 19 yeah. and everyone's. Dead. I, I, like, I've played six chapters, and I think, I think we've had three KOs. I think in six chapters, which means we'd be down to nine heroes at this point, with with two thirds of the game left. So. That's okay. Seems doable. <laughs> so I think, uh, so, I, and uh, just, yeah, so we will be playing through this on the channel. We're going to, I think, try to synchronize the launch of the series with their second Kickstarter campaign. Yeah. Um, so we'll be playing it while that's ongoing. And yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be doing our sort of remote playthroughs, joint remote playthroughs. So yeah. Um, I'm very excited. I've heard a lot of really good things about it and I'm super keen to play it. Yeah, it's going to be so fun.